These are your bacteria notes. So there are three domains and six kingdoms. One of the, your first domain is an arche is archaea or archaea, depending tomato tomato. Um, these are made up of prokaryotic cells. And we call bacteria that exist in the domain archaea archaea bacteria. So the kingdom is archaea bacteria. The domain is archaea. So archaea, what we find there are more of our extreme bacteria that live in salty or really hot places. Bacteria is our next domain, so that has also prokaryotic cells, and the kingdom that is in there is the eubacteria. So these bacteria are our cyanobacteria, and there are heterotrophic bacteria. Heterotroph means eating, so it has to eat for energy, it doesn't make its own. So our eubacteria are generally our heterotrophic bacteria. Eukaryotic cells, so our eukaryotic cells belong to the domain eukarya. So these are protists, animals, fungus, and plants. So these are the more complex cells. So our bacteria have two domains each, and then our eukarya is one domain with all eukaryotic cells. These each are kingdoms, so protists, animals, plants, and fungus. These are four kingdoms here. Eubacteria and archaeobacteria are both kingdoms. So here's just another example of what it looks like. Um, so eubacteria is unicellular and prokaryotic. Archaeobacteria is unicellular and prokaryotic. Protists are eukaryotic, and they can be unicellular and multicellular. And then we've got plants, animals, and fungus, which are all multicellular. So membrane-bound organelles in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Okay, Prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles and eukaryotes do. Prokaryotes are much smaller than eukaryotes, so eukaryotes are larger. Prokaryotes are unicellular, and eukaryotes are, are single-celled organ, or pardon, prokaryotes are unicellular, eukaryotes are multicellular. Uh, chromosomes, or nucleic acid shape, prokaryotes have a very simple shape, most of the time that's circular. Eukaryotes have a double helix shape, DNA. Uh, cell division and genetic reproduction, so in our prokaryotes, they can have asexual reproduction, conjugation, eukaryotes can have uh, sexual reproduction, and metabolic diversity is also very different. We will get into a slide with photoautotrophs, chemosynthesis, photoheterotrophs. Um, prokaryotes have a wide variety of how they obtain energy and use that energy. So here's an example again of a prokaryote versus a eukaryotic cell. Very simple um, mem membrane around here, but no membrane-bound organelles. Very complex, lots of folds, membrane-bound organelles. There are a lot of them. So again, this is a simple cell over here. This is a complex cell here. This is just an example of the size differences. So here we've got an atom, an amino acid, a protein, a ribosome, a virus. Those are all smaller than our smallest bacteria. Chloroplasts, nucleus, and our typical typical bacteria are a little bit bigger, so we can see that under a light microscope. We can see these things down here under an electron microscope. The human eye, we can't see very much, and our light microscopes stop at about a frog egg and a human egg. So just kind of interesting in terms of what we can see with different microscopes. Here's another example of sides sizes of things and the range of a microscope in terms of what we can see. So archaeobacteria versus eubacteria. So archaeobacteria is thought to be called ancient bacteria and eubacteria is like quote-unquote true bacteria. So archaeobacteria were thought to only be found in extreme environments and but now we have found a wide range of places with, with that have archaeobacteria including soils and oceans. Eubacteria is found everywhere. So archaeobacteria, that's why they called it ancient, is they thought that scientists before thought because it was in these extreme environments, these were the first cells, and so it's the ancient bacteria. Eubacteria, a little bit more new maybe, and found everywhere. So there's kind of your two differences, archaea versus eubacteria. So the cell wall differences, plasma membrane, and gene architecture differences, eubacteria have what's called peptoglycan. So this is simply just an outer layer of that cell wall um, and eubacteria have it 
archaea bacteria do not. So archaea bacteria lack this peptoglycan layer and they do not have it on the outside. So this is one of the big reasons this, the, like these three things are one of the big reasons why this archaea bacteria and eubacteria exist in different domains. So the plasma membrane, so eubacteria and archaea bacteria have different lipids. So in our plasma membranes of every cell, they have lipids embedded, so like inside the membrane. And with these different lipids helps scientists figure out that these guys need to be in different domains. So gene architecture, eubacteria do not have introns, archaea bacteria have introns. And so introns are just sections of DNA that have di uh, no information in them. And so the nucleic acids are very different from eubacteria than in archaea bacteria. So one more uh, helpful hint as to why these don't exist under the same domain anymore. Because bacteria just used to be its own kingdom, and then they split it off, decided that there was three domains and six kingdoms. That next dot is not necessary word one in terms of the formatting, so nothing goes there. So archaea bacteria resemble some of the first for life forms on Earth. They live in extreme environments, so no oxygen if it's really acidic or salty, or even in our digestive tracts. Methanogens live where there's no oxygen, so our bacteria in our digestive tracts, our archaea bacteria produces methane, that's why we have flatulence. Uh, thermophiles are hot, so anything like that has a file next to it, it means loving, so thermo is heat, so heat loving. Uh, so this is salt loving, halo is salt, salt loving organisms. So I have some examples of my vacation to Yellowstone and took some pictures of the different hot springs because there's such varying colors. And the different colors equals different bacteria. And it's really interesting. So at Mammoth Hot Springs, the different shelves that you'll see in these pictures actually occur because of the water dissolving and kind of wiping away some of the sediment and calcium carbonate is left. So the minerals in the ground and you'll learn this in chemistry, but if you've got a certain salt structure, it has a certain geometric shape, and calcium carbonate just ends up having that 90 degree angle. So this is a naturally occurring shelving situation here, which is really cool. And those different bacteria are producing, are, those different colors are from different bacteria. And that water is very, very hot. It's coming from the underground springs underneath Mammoth Hot Springs. Grand Prismatic Spring, here's some examples and col um, some colorful pictures of that. This is the most colorful geyser in Yellowstone Basin. Um, and the different colors, again, equal different bacteria. Um, the ground looks solid, so off of the walking paths, the ground looks solid, but these are actually bacteria mats that are growing in extreme environments. And you'll often see news reports about people walking off the path and stepping onto these mats. And sadly, somebody in the summer of 2016, so this summer, uh, walked off the bacteria, like walked off the boardwalk at Norris Geyser Basin. So I don't have pictures of that included in there, but the the ground and the bacteria mat was not solid enough to hold him, and the geyser and geologic formations that were on top of the earth were not solid formations because water and the acid had worn away, and he actually ended up falling through the geyser. So these look stable, so that looks like solid ground, but it is a mat of bacteria that is existing. So here's the spring kind of in the back and all these different colors and all these colors here, what looks like solid ground again is that bacteria mat. So that's pretty interesting. So this is really picturesque, pic picturesque really beautiful. It smelled very sulfury so there was a lot of organisms um, in there that smelled terrible and there was a lot of sulfur being released from the earth's crust. And again just very very colorful. Um, there's no filter on this, there's nothing on this. Here's the boardwalk right over here, um, and this is just amazing. It's an amazing view. And those colors, I'm not sure that this picture does it justice in terms of how bright those colors were, but it's pretty amazing what those bacteria colors can produce. So there's some examples of some thermophiles and halophiles living in those extreme environments. So again, those are RK bacteria living in those extreme environments. So here's an example again just of our prokaryotic cell of our bacteria. So, bacterial surfaces. Bacterial surfaces, one thing that we have that differentiates archaea bacteria from eubacteria is the peptoglycan. So peptoglycan, we can find out if our bacteria has it by doing what's called a gram stain. So if we have something that's positive, it will be a purple color. If we have something that's negative, it will be a red color. 
And if we have time to do this this year, we'll try um, just to identify in our bacteria lab if we've got gram positive or gram negative. If we don't have time, we'll definitely look at examples under the microscope regardless with prepared slides. So the, another thing that we'll see on the bacterial surface is pili. We'll see flagellum and we'll see endospores. And so again, those are things that differentiate between our archaea bacteria and our U bacteria. All right, so gram negative bacteria means that it has a thin peptoglycan layer between membranes. It's red in color and it is resistant to many antibiotics. So gram negative is very scary because it's resistant to many antibiotics. Here's an example of a gram negative diagram where we've got the bilayer here, we've got membranes, and we've got different saccharides, if you will, so different sugars, different peptides. Peptoglycan here, that layer right in here, is what makes it red in color when we stain it. Here's an example of what it would look like underneath the microscope if I've got a red gram stain going on. So gram positive means that it has a thick pep peptoglycan, um, and it, that, that thick peptoglycan layer traps crystal violet. Gram positive are not antibiotic resistant, and they'll become purple in color. So here's just an example of a gram positive peptoglycan layer cell membrane. So it's a much larger peptoglycan layer here, and again, that traps that purple color. This is what it would look like underneath the microscope. 